Hey, welcome to this very special edition of Sign Nerds Podcast on cell growth division and reproduction. All right, before we go on, take a second here to think why do you think single cell organisms are so small, mostly invisible to the naked eyes? I mean, we need a microscope to see them. At the same time, while larger organisms like ourselves, ourselves, many animals and plants are made up of trillions of little cells rather than much smaller number of larger larger cells. Uh, I would also like you to take out a sheet of paper and make a tea table asexual and sexual reproduction and um, go through and name organisms that you think reproduce asexually and organisms that you think reproduce sexually. Uh, is asexual reproduction associated with the human body at all? And if you say yes, in fact, yeah, because that's what pretty much this whole unit is about, talking about how our cells divide. But first, our first set of learning objectives are going to be explaining why cell growth, you know, what problem, what problems um, arises as cell grows uh, or as cells grow. Um, also, be able to differentiate between asexual and sexual reproduction. All right, let's go back to our characteristics of life as we started this school year. And what did we say G stands for? Growth, because all living things must grow. I mean, think about it. Here's a cute picture of Mumbo in Memphis. If you haven't seen Happy Feet, I think that's why they got this picture. <laughs> they got this pictures from anyway. But throughout your lives, how has your body gotten larger? How would this for example, mambo in a penguin grow. How do the cells making up its body compared to those making up the parent's body, meaning compare these two? Well, for mambo to get from this stage to get to the size of his father, the number of cells in his body will actually increase. Um, the individual cells do not simply grow larger to make the the, the organism larger but the number of cells actually multiply so for example mambo has fewer cells than memphis all right so think about it when you used to be a baby you have fewer cells than now as a, as a teenager all right so basically um in order for this penguin to grow into this penguin over time, it would gain the number of cells and the, num the cells will multiply and in, in, in a sense dividing or reproducing. So basically um, growing meaning that we have l more cells. Why is it that the, cell has to go th the cells have to go through this thing called division or even reproduction? All right, because think about it. Larger cells place more demands on the cell's DNA. Um, what does that mean? As the time grows larger, it doesn't add, you know, a certain amount of uh, residence per city mayor. So regardless how large that town gets, the mayor still is the mayor, just like the cell. As larger as the cell gets, it still has one DNA, one nucleus. So pretty much anything or everything that cell needs to survive depends on that. It still goes back to that same nucleus or DNA. All right. So larger cells also have trouble moving ish and moving molecules or nutri sorry, moving molecules in and out of the cell. That includes nutrients and waste. And basically that is a problem. So these are our two biggest problems that cells actually have to face or that, that they face as they grow larger. All right, because one, they have a reduction in surface area to volume ratio. It's always good to have a higher surface area to volume ratio. And I'll tell you in a moment what I mean by that. All right. Um, consider the problem of a surface area to volume ratio. How could cell growth create problem that is similar to that of a traffic jam as we see in this picture? And think about cell membrane here. So we know that our cell membrane is sort of like this and you have 
you know, um, phosphohead, you know, phosphohead, lipitel, phosphohead, lipitel, phosphohead, lipitel, phosphohead, lipitel. And this goes through, you know, pretty, pretty much all through. And basically, as the cell grows, it needs more material to cross the membrane. Well, this is comparable to traffic in terms that the tra we use traffic to move materials in and out. All right, so like the cell will use um, the membrane as this traffic way to move nutrients and water and oxygen and other waste material across the membrane. Well, as the cell grows larger, uh, that means increasing in volume, the number of traffic lanes meaning the amount of surface area to, to cross that does not keep up and the material cannot enter or leave the cell quickly as possible. So um, basically we have an information crisis, too many demands being placed on the DNA and we also having the same thing as the traffic problem. So things are not moving in and quickly as they need to. So the cell eventually can't just keep on growing. So if a, if, an, if a cell grew too large, it would not have enough relative surface area to volume ratio to move the amount of oxygen and nutrients into and out of the cell efficiently for the cell to survive. Therefore, the cell would then pretty much start getting to die or start dying because if waste are not getting out, that's toxic. If nutrients are not coming in efficiently, that's starving the cell. So having that said, having that said that the cell just can't keep on growing forever, but it has to grow to a certain size because the cell, if it is going to divide, for example, in this picture, you see that this, this cell is going to split into two cells that are genetically identical to each other. Well, to be identical, then the cell has several things to do. It has to copy all of the genome inside of it and all the organelles, and I mean, in much more of a eukaryotic cell situation, organelles that are necessary. So everything that the first cell has pretty much have to be duplicated. Eventually, the cell would then produce two daughter cells. And for that to happen, the cell must replicate its DNA first in order for them to be two daughter cells that are genetically identical to each other. So dividing to make more smaller cells keeps surface area volume ratio high. So make things can easily go in and out of the cell efficiently. So um, remember that reproduction is one of the characteristics of life that all living things must reproduce. And also um, that asexual reproduction is a type of reproduction. Um, for example, look at this bacteria. This bacteria is asexually reproducing, meaning at one point, this bacteria was half of, you know, was well, this is twice as much of a size it originally had, and now it's grown to twice of, of its size. It has also copied all of this genetic information over. I know we don't see it in this picture, but understand something about asexual reproduction is that it, it happens efficiently and quickly because it does not require a mate. So, this is one of the reasons why bacteria infections can actually start quickly and spread quickly because given that they have the right nutrients and the right temperature, nothing is going to stop these little suckers from spreading throughout your, your body and in turn to, you know, wreaking havoc on your immune system. So, uh, organism like this, uh, multicellular organism like this hydra what they would do is eventually they will you know grow and then eventually just pinch off and create exactly an identical copy of what initially was there before so when an organism like these when they create an identical version of themselves because they do not need a mate that is called asexual reproduction as opposed to asexual reproduction that produce um, clone version of the parent or genetically identical copy of the parent. Sexual reproduction is actually different and is a lot more elaborate uh, than asexual reproduction because it involves the fusion 
of two separate parent cells or two separate genomes. And so this is a bit of a lengthy process. Our offspring inherits some genetic information from each parent, therefore in turn create genetic variability or diversity within the population and ultimately within the species. So let's compare asexual and sexual, repro and, and sexual reproduction. So whatever is true over here, this is also not true on the, for, this, for these guys. They are complete opposite of each other. So for asexual reproduction, many offspring uh, in a very short period. So for example, if you had a streptococcus pyogenes in your throat or the, the bacteria that cause strep throat in your throat when you got up this morning by the time um, you've gone to bed again, you pretty much start having sore throat because you have hundreds of thousands of bacteria inside of your throat. Basically, they double the population relatively almost every 20 minutes. So these guys are you know, going at it quickly and short, uh, uh, efficiently and also coming out with a massive number. And here's the reason why. They don't need a mate. And also in a stable environment, they prefer to be in a stable environment because when condition changes, a lot of them do not adapt so well. And so they die off quickly. So imagine if your body temperature went up, most of those bacteria would die. So it serves them a good evolutionary advantage to multiply in, in a large pop you know in a large quantity in a short period. Whereas with sexual reproduction you have relatively fewer offspring and this takes a lot more time. So look at humans. It takes about it takes time for you know for 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 the fetus to develop and to mature and all that and that's about thirty nine I think it's thirty nine weeks or nine months total on average and at the end of that, on average, come out with one kid. Uh, for other organisms, they have gestation, gestation periods of 12 months, and they have to go through mating rituals and, and all these things. So these things take time. So they, they need to find a mate. And in a changing environment, because they also have the fusion of two genetics, they are able to actually create diversity. And also inherently, that actually helps them to adapt to to other current conditions within that environment. So how does all how does all of this happen? Well, this is the next part of our our lesson. You should be able to kind of you know figure you know describe how each of these events unfold. All right. Our next two learning objectives are you should be able to describe the role of chrom that chromosomes play in a cell division and also be able to describe the major events of the eukaryotic cell cycles. Or oh, eukaryotic cell cycle, sorry. Uh, you should also be able to describe what happens during the four phases of mitosis, as well as be able to describe the process of cytokinesis. So, um, what role do chromosomes play in cell division? Well, look at it this way. If you were in charge of a military base and your, your post had been commissioned to, to carry out a mission somewhere far away and you need highly specialized, trained, special ops, you know, guys to go do this job and the night before they could leave one of them felt sick and can't go or got injured from a you know routine training session you just cannot replace them with just anybody they have to be replaced with somebody with equally as the equal amount of training and type of training so that's what chromosomes do chromosomes are essentially you know DNA so DNA has to be the same thing. So in eukaryotic cells, uh, sorry, in prokaryotic cells, the DNA is packaged in a circular form. And you know, so you have this circular chromosome. Uh, it's single-stranded. So it's very simplistic. And this is one of the advantage why, or one of the reasons why um, prokaryotic cells can multiply quickly in a short period because there's not much happening. Whereas with, you know, with eukaryotic cells, um, the, 
chromosomes are a lot more complex. The DNA is packaged into multiple chromosomes, and and we see that your DNA is usually it comes in the form of a double helix, which you know is then wrapped around these histone proteins to be coil and then further supercoil, and you have that then form our duplicated chromosome, which are in a joint at the at a centromere. What I want you to also know is that, oops, all right, so this, oops, uh, that's not the right one, sorry. Let me see if I can erase this off. Um, no, that's not the eraser. Oh, I did it. So this right here, that is a sister chroma, oh, that's a chromatid. Well, the chromatids are joined together at the centromere. So this is the male, I said this is a male version of this gene, and this is a female version of the same gene, all right? So pretty much what's gonna be happening is that, you know, this has to be copied. So uh, think about it this way, in every single cell in your body has 46 chromosomes, all right? So 46 of these guys, in every cells in your body and they all divide asexually or using mitosis with the exception of your sex cells or sperm cells and eggs all right so all your other cells in your body which are also known as somatic cell all right or body cells divide asexually so chromosomes actually play a very major role because that's how you get the mirror copy of the identical cells produced at the end of the day. Um, cell division in prokaryotic cells is not as complex as it, as it is in eukaryotic cell. Um, so basically the first thing in, in almost all cell division is the first thing is the the cell membrane or the cell actual cell has to double up in size so the cell has to enlarge in almost twice as much as it began in its original size and as you can see here dna duplication start to happen all right so circular dna here is actually becoming two rings and why does the cell duplicate its dna well the cell duplicate its dna so that each daughter cell can have exactly a complete copy of the original cell's DNA. And that is, you know, that's important because uh, if this cell is gonna do the job of, of the original cell, then it has to have the same type of program. And eventually what happened as it, after the chromosomes have, you know, du then duplicated, well, the two molecules attached to the different regions, so they start going to different poles or different ends of this uh, of, of of the cell, and sort of kind of you know, uh, then the cells start to kind of pinch inward. Uh, what will happen if the cell membrane did not indent and pinch inward? Well, that would not harm. Oh well, that would not. Sorry. Then the cell will not form two, and two new daughter cells. The original cell will then maintain two complete co copies of its DNA. Well, that is not that is not what was actually intended for this guy. So, but for the most part, binary fit. This is called binary fission, by the way, because you have one cell. You started with one cell that copied its DNA, and it's pretty much splitting, you know, into two new cells that are genetically identical to each other by means to fission into split. So you have one cell that then copied its DNA and got larger and got cop you know, split into two identical cells. So this brings us to uh, the part about us in the, the eukaryotic cell cycle. Well, the eukaryotic cell cycle is actually much more complex and are much more complex than the prokaryotic cell cycle as we just saw in with the binary fission that just happened. So when you look at this diagram, all of this, the way I see this, this is like Pac-Man, all right? So the eukaryotic cell cycle is divided into two main parts. 
So this is all part one, and this is part two, cell division. All right. Excuse me. The part before cell division is called interfa interface. An interface is actually uh, divided into three smaller parts. All right, G1, G1 phase. First of all, interface is the one phase in a cell cycle that the cell spend most of its time. I mean, if you look at this, if this was the clock and this is 12, this is six, this is three, this is nine, uh, let's just leave 10, pretty much. So that, you know, the cell is spending most of its time in interface so the first phase of interface is g1 this is where the cell spend most of its time actually in interface because the cell has to do most of its growing here and it starts to make um, start to make energy many atp and it's also start to make copies of the organelles because hey they also have to be copied over too so everything inside of the cell pretty much get double in size once that, that phase is done, the cell goes through a checkpoint just to make sure that everything got done properly. Then it will you know, kind of transition into the S phase. S stands for, so S stands for sentences. And we use this word a lot when we we'll talked about the ribosomes and the protein sentences. And sentences simply means to make. So in this S phase is DNA replication or making copy or duplicate duplicating copies of the original DNA. So if the cell started with just one chromosome, by the end of S phase, it would have had two chromosomes that are genetically identical to each other because it's a photocopy of each other. Once S phase gets done, the cell then moves on into G2 phase, which is what we call this the preparation phase for mitosis. And the cell spend actually the least amount of time in this phase of all the time expensing interface, uh, the cell continue to progressively grow throughout this entire cycle and the final growing will get done in G2 phase. And all the other uh, cellular organ um, structural things that the cell will need to go into mitosis or get finished in here. I'd, this right here is a crucial, crucial part. The cell literally, this is called checkpoint two. So this is checkpoint one. All right, I already marked it. So checkpoint one, and this is checkpoint two. And basically, with checkpoint two, is that it what happens here is that the cell goes through what we call DNA proofreading and it makes sure that the DNA that was copied here has no fault in it. It was not there, was not a fracture or miscopy of anything, and also making sure that all the other organelles have been copied properly. If anything seems to be fixed with the DNA, the cell pretty much goes back to the S in sense, you know, kind of make sure things are fixed and then comes back. In the event that things cannot be fixed, this, then the cell will actually carry out what is called programmed cell death, which is apoptosis, and the cell is marked to be killed by a killer cell. All right. And once everything gets done properly, then the cell will transition into mitosis or M phase, which is then broken into four distinct phases, uh, which are abbreviated as PMAT. P stands for prophase, M stands for metaphase, A stands for anaphase, and T for telophase. And that is followed by cytokinesis. All right. All right, take a second, look at this picture, uh, or these pictures, sorry. Um, which cell cycle do you think the cells of plain cell undergo? And which one do you think bac a bacterium will undergo? So which one do you think is more complex? All right, if you said that this is bacteria, would be bacteria and this would be plants, that's great. Which one do you think it, do we fall through? Uh, which one do, do we fall under? This or that? This. All right. Think about it. Eukaryotic cell cycle. And it's about you. All right. Sounds corny, but it works every time. So right 
after everything got checked and is well underway, the cell then you know goes into a division phase, and the first part of that is uh, mitosis, which pretty much in its phase, uh, the cell, uh, the cell you know go through these four separate phases we just went through, which the acronyms are P, MAT, all right, and what does P stand for? Prophase. Uh, M metaphase again A anaphase and T telophase and basically what is going on is that the cell will go through these stages where it's sorting DNA out and we'll talk about it soon but this phase is you know then immediately followed by uh, cytokinesis where actually the the nucleus of the cell would split or divide into two cells or two daughter cells. Um, all right, so just a, a quick backup question: When did we when did we have our chromosomes? When did the chromosomes get duplicated during what phase? Uh, if you say S phase and interphase, then that's correct. In prophase, which is the first phase of mitosis, the nucleus envelope actually condenses and the chromosomes then become visible. So all throughout this entire process, we have not been able to see the nucleus, I'm oh, sorry, to see the, the chromosomes inside or the DNA inside of the nucleus. But you see these dotted lines, just, they're saying that the nucle these are the nuclear envelopes and they're starting to dissolve. So as they start, to, they start to dissolve, the um, the the, uh, the chromosomes actually, or then the chromatin, then actually start to condense and you know start to pair up. Well, one half is a chromatid, but when they're together, they're called sister chromatids. So the sister chromatids pair up. Also, in our video that we show in class, you also notice. These would be the people wearing a white shirt, and and the cell membrane would be the people wearing a black shirt, and pretty much in prophase, these people started to kind of like fade out into the background and beyond the people in the black shirt. Well, also in in animal cell, we have these centrioles, and the centrioles will go on to opposite ends of the cell or opposite poles, and they also start to have spindles fiber from form from these. Um, basically, what the spindle fiber would then do is then it's attached at the centromere. So basically, in that bring the cell into metaphase, and what I always is metaphase, and I hope it's a cute one <laughs> because pretty much chromos you know, chromatid A and chromatid B, even though they are genetically identical, uh, genetically similar, they are looking at each other right across from each other. So you hope it's a cute face. Basically, they line up in the middle, and this middle part is called the metaphase plate. All right. So, if this this was Earth, then that would be like the equator. All right. So the spindle fiber attached to the uh, chromosome at the centromere. Well, basically, this is going to be the 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 the, the, uh, the ultimate talk of war by cells ever. You're gonna see. Um, basically and then that leads the cell into anaphase well in anaphase uh, a as an anaphase and away is a a part is also starts up an a basically what happens is the spindle fiber may start to then do its job its job is to actually yank the suckers apart from each other basically it's yanking your chromosomes or the cells chromosomes apart from each other bringing them to opposite poles of the cell. So if you notice this ge this gene is genetically identical to that gene and this gene is genetically identical to that gene and so is this one. So essentially what's happening is that we're having identical copies of the genomes going back to opposite ends of the cell and that leads the cell into telophase, uh, sorry, into telophase. In telophase especially with animal cells, and this only happens in animal cells, the cells form a cleavage furrow, all right? Uh, I had a student who actually uh, said, 
I forgot which one of you guys said this. Uh, Cause like think about it, this what oh I think it was Cass who said oh, a cleavage fraud because animals have cleavage and I don't know if that helps you to remember by all means knock your socks off. Um, but in telophase it, animal cells form a cleavage fraud and that's how you know when a cell that's dividing is actually an animal cell versus if it is a plant cell. Um, what we actually start to see is you know eventually you the cell will start to form an indentation further indentation in and our nuclear envelope is now coming back and our spindles fibers are now being retreated and so now you have your cell becoming two cells and at this point we actually so from s phase all the way through all the way through anaphase we've had duplicated chromosomes because i mean it's still two copies of the same genetic material and still in one cell but now we also see that the cell is actually starting to become two distinct cells um, this after telophase the cell cycle then progresses into cytokinesis cyto actually means cell and what do we think what do we say uh, kinetic is is the energy of motion so moving things apart you know so moving cells apart uh in animal cells the, the cell membrane pinches inward even further like we just mentioned earlier into the center and now at the end you have two genetically identical total cells so when you look at the, the gen genetic materials in here they are pretty much the same and so because these cells are dividing in order to replace each other so basically uh let's a quick overview so you start out or the cell starts out in interphase and it copies its dna and it grow it grows first it copies its dna and makes energy and then goes into mitosis which is the first phase of mitosis is prophase all right and prophase is when the chromosome condense and nuclear envelopes start to dissolve spindles fibers start to form and now we can see them under a microscope basically then progresses into the metal phase where they line up in the middle of the cell and basically spindle fibers attach at the centromere and they get ready to be yanked apart ultimate battle of talk of war pretty much splitting the genetic materials into half and each half is go going to the other opposite end of the cell and you having then go into telophase where the cells then start to pinch inward and uh, where it would divide into two genetically identical cell oops uh two genetically identical cells in um in um intel in cytokinesis before we even go into regulating the cell cycles just uh just something else to keep in mind is that mitosis happen to replace dead old and aging cells and starts with one cell and so two uh, identical daughter cells all right so now we're gonna go into just this brief part of our lesson talking about how is this whole big process regulated what does regulation mean first of all yeah when you regulate something you you know you control when certain things happen or when certain events occur so we're going to look at the cell cycle again and see when you know what regulates certain events all right uh, we're not going to spend too, a lot of time on this on this portion of your lesson because i just want to point out to you um two events that really control the cell cycle or regulate it so you should be able to describe how the cell cycle is regulated and explain how cancer cells are different sorry different from other cells in in your body all right um first of all cell division is important uh, when you get hurt when you break a bone or when you fracture the bone all of these things happen you know to us and we can't just uh say there and cry woo boo hoo you know well cell division has to happen in order for us to have repair so cell division is not only happening to help us grow and become bigger and so forth but it also helps us to to repair and 
healed, healed our broken body parts, <laughs> lack of better terms. Um, before actually I'd, I came into teaching, I, I used to, you know, I used to be a graduate student at Roswell Park and part of what we did and part of pretty much our, you know, work is to grow cells. And when scientists grow cells in a laboratory, the cells will continue to grow and divide until they can actually get in contact with each other. Once they know there's a neighboring cell, uh, they will stop growing. That's normal. All right. Uh, if you strip the neighboring cells away, then well, the remaining cells will start to grow and grow and divide, grow and divide and grow and divide. Well, when you have a cut, what kind of healing pattern do you see? And where do the new cells come? Um, what do the new cells form first? Uh, usually, the cut heals from the edges inward, right? Yeah. Well, look at this picture. Uh, look at this one, right? It, this is uh, this is uh, an illustration of how the break in the X-ray on the left. So this picture would heal. So this is, you know, you, th this is the same pattern. You see this, so you will see that healing actually starts. Um, healing actually starts from from the outward inward. All right. Um, so basically, um, sorry. Um, when you look here, the cells from the from the outward of the of the broken bones, which so just keep dividing, keep growing, keep dividing, keep growing, keep dividing, and, and you're wondering, but when do they stop doing that? Well, they will stop growing and keep dividing the second they get in contact with each other, just like the scientists would do in a laboratory. So they, it's you know, you start to have new bone cells being formed. So cells at the edge of the injury, you know, you will see, you know, the cells at the edge of the injury are stimulated to divide rapidly. So as injury gets, you know, as injury heals, the rate of cell division will actually start to then slow down, and pretty much that's how you will have this bone get regenerated. And this is also true for other type of injury that are not bone related, like cuts, for example. Well, so scientists in the um, in the 1980s actually, uh, I think is. Uh, uh, in the 1980s, found a protein that that uh, was found in cell undergoing mitosis at the same time, and so since um, this this protein actually helped regulate how you know the cell go through the cycle, it's kind of called it cyclins. All right, so cyclins is actually the proteins that help the um, the cells to go from one cycle to the next cycle, uh, from one phase to the next phase. So, as they from G1 to S phase to G2, and then the mitosis. All right. So, uh, basically, internal, internally, uh, it responds to the events of the, uh, inside of the cell. Let the cell cycle proceed only when certain steps have been met. So, the cell has to first reach a certain state in a growth size and. Um, Make sure that you know it's, it has up, you know a certain amount of energy and and, and that sort of things before it can actually uh, progress to the next level. So going from G1, if it is if the cell is still too small, it's not going to just go into S phase. All right. Um, so for external regulators, the cell then you know it responds. Uh, this uh, the cyclins respond to the events outside of the cell, so it direct. The cell to speed up or slow down the cell you know the cell cycle meaning for example if going back to our bones um going back to our bones scenario earlier you will see at the beginning you you will have an accelerated cell division and as the cells get closer and closer and they start to get in contact with each other cell division actually would then slow down so Cycling is our first and is, is one of our two regulators. The second regulator of the cell cycle is the guy that we mentioned earlier, apoptosis. All right. 
Uh, basically, this is divine, defined as program cell death. What does that mean? Well, if if uh, if you don't, if the cell doesn't have the DNA copy properly, well, basically, if you if the DNA strand was something like this, but then after S phase it copies something like this, well, this is not the same thing as this, and so. If the cell goes through the rest of the cycle with this DNA, that's bad programming. So the cells is going to be created. It's a it's a it's, it's a mutated cell. It's a, it's a cell that has a different in you know, a program to, to to carry out a different job. So that is not good for the cell. So it, it will try to fix it. If it cannot fix it, then the cells will actually put a stamp on it or sort of a you know late 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 term to you know. Uh, like what I call the rich dummy term, put a stamp on it and say mark it for death. And so that cell is programmed to, to be killed by um, a killer cell. Um, so this is, th there has to be a series of, uh, of, of actions or requirement or rec prerequisite that have to be met for the cell to actually make that executive call. So in review, cyclines, re you know, tells the uh, cell to go from one phase to the next and apoptosis stops the cell from copying a bad DNA and so it marks it to be killed. But uh, things don't always work out flawlessly, obviously, because if it if it did, then we wouldn't have any health issues. <laughs> um, basically, uh, this brings us to cancer. Cancer cells are cells that do not respond to normal regulatory signals. So everything that we talk about in like the cyclines and the apoptosis, all of those pretty much do not, these, those rules don't apply to cancer cells because basically a cancer cell is like a bully of cells pretty much. I, like I said earlier, cells will grow and as they get in contact with each other, then they slow down growing and dividing. Or cancer cell like who cares you know I want more more and it's all about me well the cell cycle is disrupted and the cells can grow and just continue to divide uncontrollably as we can see here these are normal healthy cells these guys are not this is a tumor well as you will also see also somewhere in a close proximity there's always a blood vessel that goes by because through the blood vessels also come the nutrients and and, and also goes out the waste to to keep the cell healthy or keep the cells healthy all right let's uh, take a closer look at a cancer cell one a cell begins to divide abnormally so we see this normal 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 boom this is not looking good and so we start to see it start to take over or pretty much encroach on the other the space and, and the resources of the other cells well, the cells then produce a tumor and they start to display normal cells. So this is a tumor, all right? This well and right, this nodule. If this is a tumor, it starts to actually, you know, restrict other cells from occupying the space. And as it restrict other cells from occupying the space, it's also using of the nutrients, AKA, that are, brought, that are brought in by blood vessel or the supplier down here, all right? Well. If that growth, that, that tumor continues to grow, as you can see, going from here to this, we are getting closer. Well, the, the closer this gets to the blood vessel and any of these cells, then or it, in, that increases the chances of these cells actually moving into the bloodstream. Once the, once the cancer moves into the bloodstream, and it will make its way to the lymphatic, you know, uh, uh, vessels as well at the same time and what happens is then you no longer have a localized cancer and this cancer had, has actually what what we call metastasized I mean it went from being local to becoming systemic and so the cancer is now spread throughout the body and pretty much is it starts it's continuing to, to spread and divide grow spread divide grow spread divide and and that's not good news for the patient pretty much um, so what causes cancer? Well, in all cancers, 
control over the cell cycle has actually been broken down so the cell is not actually responding to normal signals anymore. So cancer cells can actually result from defects in the genes that, that control the cell growth and division, aka cyclins and apoptosis. So if cyclins are not working properly and apoptosis is not occurring when bad when bad genes are copied, well, that inherently becomes part of a new program written for that organism. And so you pretty much have DNA gone you know, rogue on the uh, organism. Depending on how how advanced or when your when can the cancer was detected and also the the health of the individual, um, practitioners have three options of treatment so far as we have in in the world. The most you know the most common treatment options that we have besides experimental things that probably other treatments and all tries is uh, surgery. Surgery is usually good for cancer that hasn't really, you know, gone, gotten bigger and advanced into stage yet. Um, that hasn't made a way to the bloodstream. So they're still localized. And so they're going to go in there and cut it out. Radiation is also another one. And chemotherapy is another option. Cell differentiation. That's a mouthful. Well, think about it. Differential. Uh, what does it mean? What word do we see? Different. Well, di what other word that sounds like, well, not sounds like, but have meaning close to something that is different? Uh, specialty? You know. So think along that line. Cell differentiation. Or at the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the process of cell differentiation and also define what stem cells are and why they're important. You should be able to also tell us, um, or explain what are some possible benefits and issues relating to stem cell research. We're not going to go into a lot of detail about this because I just, you know, but during the development of an, of an in individual or an, or, or an organism, the cell will have to differentiate in order to become specialized. All right. Uh, what does that mean? Well, Specialized meaning they all have a spe specific job that they do. So look at it as a classroom. Uh, all of you are unspecialized. You are on a quest of finding out what you want to do for the rest of your life. Unlike you, I have a job. I have a career. I'm focused and I know in what direction I want to, what direction I'm heading in for the rest of my life. Can I change? Yeah, but just for the sake of argument, I'm specialized, so I am a differentiated cell as you are an undifferentiated cell or unspecialized cell. In order for the cell to be differentiated, that or aka it has to be specialized. That means it has a specific job that it has to do. So for example, let's back it up. I can't do that in here. So this is a cell that was, you know, carried out photosynthesis. Think about it, grain. This is, uh, this is a cell that was then store sugar, and whereas this guy would be a cell that transport materials. All right, what are stem cells? In in short and sim simplistic terms, stem cells are unspecialized cells from which differentiated cells develop. So pretty much the the rudimentary material from which you know, our cells come from before they become known as kidney cells, blood cells, liver cells, you know, hair cells and skin cells. So at what is that core material? So once they haven't yet been destined to do a specific job, they call stem cell. Uh, there are two types. Totipotent, these are stem cells that can develop into any type of cells in the body, including cells that make up the, the extra embryonic membranes and placenta. Whereas pluripotent, these are cells that are just capable of developing into most, but not all, of the body cells type. All right. So what do I want you to get from there? Well, excuse me. Um, 
After fertilization, a human embryo actually develops into a hollow ball. This is called a blastocyst. Um, the actual body of the embryo develops from the inner membrane or inner cell mass. Sorry. These in the inner cell mass are embryonic stem cell. So these right here, these are embryonic stem cell. And um, they can differentiate into virtually any cell type in the human body that you want them, well, that you can program them to be. Um, so uh, scientists are able to culture embryonic stem cell actually in petri dishes and also uh, by they, they just remove them out of the blastocysts and grow them in a lab and and uh, they can use these to create whatever cells that they want to program those cells to do um, so let me see all right uh, so we just went over the last picture we just went over with the with the cells on and and in the blastocyst, those are embryonic stem cells. Well, it makes sense to find stem cells in the early stages of an embryonic development, but stem cells can also be found in adult body, and these are called adult stem cells. And if you remember, I don't know, some of you guys might be a little too young to 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 know this, but in the um, during the presidency of George um, W. Bush Jr. Uh, you, you, you will hear a lot about the controversies about stem cell research because it was it, it has always been a major issue. Well, it was the two types of stem cell they were talking about: is embryonic and an adult. Well, in adult stem cells, they're different in 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 a sense that they are not pluripotent or totipotent, but they are multipotent. And that means they are limited. To, they have limited potential to develop into many different cell types, or different to be differentiated into different cell types. And these are only they are mostly found in bone marrow, hair follicles, and also in uh, some some of them are found in brain, heart, and skeletal muscles. All right. Um, so, what's the big deal? Well. Human adult stem cells research is rarely ever a matter of argument or debate, but what most of the issue lies is in, you know, embryonic stem cell. Well, um, think about what are some of the potential benefit of 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 researchers using out of these two to advance our medical technology. So. Pretty much the potential that those stem cells and embryonic stem cells bear is that uh, doctors can actually tailor your med your treatment to your very genetic, and so that's that's the push about this. Well, well, what is the resistance for? If that's all a good thing, well, it's a matter of um, ethical debate because some. Even although most people don't have issues with adult stem cell, but the issue with embryonic stem cell is that uh, people who support uh, pro-life or you know pro-life choices um, they find an argument against this in in that taking these cells, you are disrupting a potential life form that could exist. So you know it's sort of taking a life to save a life. And also, the argument against this also also is that uh, you are just plain trying to play God. And so, uh, what, where does the line stop? And you know, how far do we go? And so, these are some of the um, ethical issues and debate, despite the benefits or potential benefits that stem cell research uh, promises. So I hope you found that um, information that living things grow and growing meaning that we have multiplication of cells in a, and our cell number incre increases because when you're a baby, you have fewer cells than when you're a teenager than when you're an adult. Uh, but cells cannot just keep growing. They have to divide because if they keep growing, well, that's, 
information overload, DNA overload, and also we have a uh, inefficiency to carry material in and out of the cells due to lower surface area to volume ratio. So the cells have to divide, and for the cells to divide, it has to make copies of all its genetic materials and grow twice as much in size. And the, the pro, uh, prokaryotic cell division is quite easy. It, that's binary fission where you start with one cell, copy this genetic information, and then um, pretty much uh, pinch inward and then split into two. Whereas the eukaryotic cell cycle actually is a little bit more elaborate because you, it's a combination of two types of uh, genetic information coming together. So in the, that's broken down into two main parts, uh, division, uh, interphase and division, and the cell spend most of its time into division, whereas um, we have, you have uh, in the interphase three so, um, sm smaller phases, G1, where the cell grows and makes energy and makes organelle copies, and the cell then goes into S phase where it copies, it actually duplicates its DNA, and then it goes into G2 where the cells then make all final preparation and to make sure everything has been done correctly. If not, fix. If it cannot be fixed, apoptosis and so forth. Then the cell will then go into mitosis, which then have four phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, followed by cytokinesis. Um, prophase, basically, nuclear envelope dissolves, and then the cell, the, the chromosome become visible, and they start to pair up with each other. And in metal phase, they line up in the middle of the cell where the spinal fiber then attaches, and the spinal fiber job is to pull them apart in anaphase. And then we have the nuclear envelope start to reappear in telophase, and the cells then start to pinch and work, creating a cleavage for in animal cells, which then mark two distinct cells formed in cytokinesis which are then comparable to be genetically cloned of each other or identical to each other. So at the end of mitosis, you start with one cell that produces two daughter cells that are genetically identical, and the main job is to replace dead or, or aging cells. This process is actually regulated by cyclins and apoptosis. Uh, how, you know, how, how do cells get to that phase? Well, they first differentiate that they come from, and all cells come from stem cells, and Stem cells are on specialized cells before they become, you know, um, they, before they have a special job to do in 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 the, in the body. And so, uh, there are two types of stem cells: embryonic stem cell and uh, adult stem cell. And both of these present, uh, pos you know, possible benefits for medical advancement, whereas also presenting ethical debates about the values and sanctity of life and which is an ongoing debate in, in our society. Uh, I hope you found this helpful. Study for your test.